All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live this week with Samantha from Melbourne. Hi, Sam. Nice to have Hi, you. Everyone. So good to be here. So good to have you with us. And uh, thank you also, everybody, for your lovely comments uh, in the Facebook group and on the Facebook page. Uh, give us a thumbs up or send us a heart if you can hear us. We always want to make sure that our internet is working and I see a few coming in here and we'd also love to know where you're calling in from. So perfect Stockholm, uh, let us know uh, anything that during the conversation that we have here that you'd like to know more about and any questions that you might have. These Facebook Lives really are meant to serve and support you in your practice, in your life, and give direct, implementable, actionable insights. So if there is anything you'd want to know, uh, we can see the comments here from where we are, and we are always happy to integrate that. Hi, Emil, Eric, Michaela. Hi, everybody. And yeah, as I said, we're like super excited to have you with us, Sam. Um, we chose a different structure due to a topic that you really wanted to talk about, and we're so happy to go with the flow. <laughs> so I will not even introduce it much other than just saying, so last year, I believe it was, you came home from a holiday and you were greeted with a shocking uh, experience. So we'd love to hear what that was, and then we'll take it from there. Sure. Thanks so much, Jochen. It's such an honor to share my experience. Um, yeah, so I came home last year from a trip and my um, partner of eight years um, told me that he, he didn't feel the same and that he no longer wanted to be with me, um, which came as uh, quite some shock and surprise and just devastating really yeah mm -hmm. so you had no idea that this was even a possibility or that that could happen you just came back and were looking forward to being together um you know you obviously never know what's coming and life is completely uncertain and obviously i always knew that intellectually but absolutely i couldn't have predicted it i had no idea and it it wasn't what I wanted and I was just completely um, devastated and I, you know, wanted so much for it to be different and to fix it and to, you know, fix, you know, um, sort it all out and understand it. But he had made up his mind and it was, and it was over. Mm. Well, I can, yeah, as I said, when we spoke briefly yesterday, I can just, so I can feel that literally, I mean, who hasn't that happened to in, you know, in our life? So I think everybody at least has a memory. Maybe some of you watching this are in a situation like this right now. And ultimately, really, we feel like heartbreak and that loss and grief, even in relationships, maybe that we're still in. So even if you're not in, in that specific situation right now, I think we all know the deep pain that this can bring. So eight years you were together and um, like, what did it, what did that bring up immediately? I mean, you, you said you wanted to try and fix it. You were devastated. How, uh, how did you take it? I mean, what, what, what did you do? Um, you know, like you said, everyone can relate. And I was like a walking um, movie script. I, uh, I could, couldn't really sleep or eat and I just would cry everywhere. I remember actually at one time I thought to myself, I better keep drinking water because I'm losing so much fluid through my eyes that I need to keep my fluids up. Um, and, you know, like it, it, besides for just practically, there was also just so, it was so painful. Like there were times when I thought, I'm just going to stop breathing because it's not humanly possible to feel this much pain and to continue living. Um, and I had, you know, I became, I totally I understood every song about heartbreak and I became a complete cliche. I would wake up in the mornings having forgotten what had happened. And then that thought would come in like, Oh my God, he's not here. He's, he, he's moved out of our home together. 
um, he's not coming back and the barrage of, um, of just pain and stuff and just heartache and grief would just come up again. And this happened for honestly a couple of months of just, you know, getting mm. almost every morning and yeah, it was, it was so, it was so painful. <laughs> And so you actually had lived together. You shared a home together before. So I know from my own experience that basically everything reminds you of like all the things you did together. And uh, was was that the same for you? Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, it still is. It, not everything reminds me of him. But of course, you know, you spend eight years with someone. You have so many shared memories, shared places, shared things, you know, obviously all of our possessions were together. Our families were really close with each other. His family had become my family. Mm. Um, you know, he had nieces and nephews and those were my nieces and nephews. And, you know, we had a couch and a washing machine and just, you know, so many shared space, a shared Google calendar, all these things that you just, you know, Airbnb accounts, just all this stuff that it was like all of a sudden I had to, it felt like I was building my life from scratch again, where mm. I was, you know, having to kind of untangle this entire lifetime that I'd built with someone and work out how to put one step in front of the other as, as just me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you just mentioned that you also, you know, not only had you lived together and shared your like life as a couple together, th there was the, it extended family and and everybody what what was their response did, did did they share anything with you or how how did that sit with everybody what what happened there um i think it brought up a lot of pain for everyone you know everyone uh loved us individually and together and i think it came as a surprise not just for me but for a lot of other people as well like our our family and friends, I think, were also surprised. And besides for their own pain and they, you know, miss, you know, my family missed him and um, his family also were just really upset. Everyone also wanted to make the pain go away for, for me and, you know, wanted to support me. They were, you know, everyone was just so incredible and just wanted to, everyone was doing their best to make sure that I was okay, basically. And it was, it was wild. Mm. It sounds, it sounds sweet as well. I mean, that, you know, that, that they would like also his family would then care for you and, and, and for how you were doing. So they were yeah. there and ready to support you. And I'm sure that that just kept also the, like the presence of the relationship, of course, very Absolutely. obvious and apparent for you. Yeah, um, it was, I, you know, I feel so lucky that I have such incredible support in my life and so many people, so many well-meaning people just trying their absolute best to do everything they could to m make sure that I felt supported and okay. Um, but obviously in those moments, there's nothing that you can do to take the pain away. Um, that's just how it is in that moment. Mm. And, but so was that the main, like looking at everyone's support that you just mentioned? And of course that is something that's interesting here. By the way, there were so many hearts coming up here. I don't know if you saw that and, and uh, hugs from everywhere for you. Uh, thank you for sharing this so openly with, with everybody here. And yeah, it's just so tender and precious. Thank you, Sam. Um, thank you. So in, in terms of everyone's support, you just mentioned everybody wanted to help you to get that pain away uh, or soothe that pain. And yet you knew that nothing nothing can take that away in that moment. What, what were some of the things that were um, like that people tried to, I don't know, cheer you up or support you with? And did you take on board any of these things or how did you how did you relate with all of that that came your way in that in that circumstance um yeah it was amazing the barrage of advice that i received from sometimes people that barely even knew me or my circumstance um and it was it was so sweet and well meaning but it really i think if i summarize all of it in one way it's just all of it was doing something to try to make 
all of the feelings go away because they were so uncomfortable. You know, so people told me that I should just distract myself, um, I should go out partying or hook up with somebody else, I should, um, you know, get really angry at him, um, you know, like he'd done the wrong thing and, you know, somehow make him wrong or blame him and that would kind of alleviate my something. Or, um, I was also told that I needed to, like, process it and I didn't even know, you know, what, what how, <laughs> what does that even mean? Um, or, you know, just I, 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 it was just wild, so many things, so many people. And I think, like I said, it all came down to this um, heart wish of people that I would be okay and that believing that being okay meant that I had to not feel pain, not feel grief, not feel rejection, um, not feel longing and missing and, and heartache. Um, and, you know, so I, it wasn't like I needed to sort of say, listen, that's not the right way to go about this. I, I just could see that it was complete love. Um, mm. But, you know, it was often conflicting, you know. You need to take some time away. No, you need to really engage with your life. You need to distract yourself. No, you actually need to process this. Totally conflicting. Mm -hmm. And now you just mentioned that uh, you could see that all of the like the the well-meaning advice um, was basically around different means or ways or methods of either um, avoiding or replacing these like incredibly strong emotions and and thoughts that you had, um, or to like really dive in there. Uh, like you said, process them or uh, with my background of therapy, you know, just like talking about it and looking maybe at, you know, patterns in the family or then, <laughs> you know, there's just an endless, an endless supply of, of ways that we could really said, process or, or analyze a situation like this. So just by the way that you put that, it obviously, uh, for everybody who doesn't know that, Sam, how long had you been involved in Balanced View at the time? Um, when um, when this all happened, I think maybe three three -ish years. Mm -hmm. So by that time, you already knew that neither of these approaches to make you feel better would be something that you would want to entertain as your like strategy of 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 dealing with that. And you just mentioned one of the reasons. Um, already of like just these ideas being so already conflicting or contradictory within themselves um mm. had had you been in similar circumstances before uh where you have tested some of these things absolutely i i've tested it in every aspect of my life and you know work stress family relationships when things would arise in my intimate relationship that just were difficult, um, mm -hmm. you know, grief and pain and, you know, not understanding something or all of those impulses and thoughts and feelings have come up for me forever and will continue to. And I've all, and I've applied this practice and the support for those years and with such incredible results. And I remember actually on the night that he left, I, um, was completely devastated and um, I, I remember thinking really, really powerfully to myself, okay, this is it. This is where the rubber meets the road and I am not turning away from this and I am not going to indulge, avoid or replace this experience. This is my opportunity to actually face all of these powerful feelings front on and exactly as they are mm -hmm. and to really take it as an opportunity to really test this teaching out and that's what I did. You have us right there with you. <laughs> what what exactly like how how did that look in your experience? How like what did you do instead of trying to process or in, in instead of trying to um make yourself feel better how how did that look in your own experience to 
be in yeah. that situation. Like you just said, you you still felt the desperation, the grief, everything was still there, maybe even more there because you didn't try to get rid of it. You didn't try to process it. That's at least my experience that Absolutely. it's not like, right? It's not like checking out and no longer having any of these feelings. It's like feeling them even more and more deeply wild. and more fully. Yeah, wild. yeah. exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I I basically took every moment and every moment that, especially every moment that I remembered, um, to really put this put what's offered here into practice. So, whenever I remembered, I took short moments and I just relaxed um, and allowed myself to be as I was. And like you said, that was in really intense, like really, really whew, wild. Um, but that was my commitment and I could see in doing that that the pain, the pain was okay exactly as it was and the, the desperation for answers and the anger was, was totally fine in its own place. Um, I also, you know, have um, touched in with my teacher all the time when, when, you know, things felt confusing and I just wanted to, to sort of reset back to my own knowing and my own deep yeah, my own knowing, um, and I would just touch in with her, which was just so incredibly supportive. And I also relied really um, a lot on the community here in Melbourne and actually all over the world. But it was just so amazing when things were really intense. I could just pick up the phone to a friend who um, is also relying on this teaching and rather than them sort of trying to fix the situation or fix how I was feeling, they just allowed me to be exactly as I was, which was the most profound gift to just have permission to just be awful, to just be heartbroken. Um, and, and yeah, there were so many, so I listened to talks all the time, especially in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep. Um, and that was so supportive because that was really stressful, those, you know, middle of the night hours where you feel really alone and um, suffering and mm -hmm. just to have, be able to pop in a talk and, and listen was um, incredible. And it was what was so amazing is that it was so practical, it was always available. Um, and I, I just felt really clear amidst the complete tumult and confusion that was the way that my life looked in that time. Mm. Wow, that is such an apt um, description. Thank you for again sharing that in 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 this like very real and not at all abstract way. Um, <laughs> so you know, for for everybody, especially for the people who are maybe new here, it, it it sounds just so intriguing when you say that you were clear amidst the turmoil, and that you felt. You didn't use those words, but it sounded like you felt at ease or okay with feeling like all these really strong emotions like um, anger or, or um, despair or all these things that came up in that situation for you. Um, how, I don't know if this is possible to explain or to describe further, but, but, but how, how does that, how does that feel? How does that change? the nature of your relationship, like with yourself, maybe we can start there when you can feel anger and desperation, all these things. And, and yet you, you're not trying to change it. You're not indulging them. You just let all that be as it is. And, and you discover that like ease and, and that clarity that is present regardless. Such a good question. And like you said, it's so hard to describe. It's, almost inexplicable, but for me, it was like having a ground of complete openness and stability and um, ease, exactly like you said, ease, regardless of the storm that was appearing in my mind. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I felt that all the time, every minute of the day, but really predominantly that was my experience was I could be experiencing the most intense affliction of any description, you know, 
even if that was just exhaustion because I hadn't slept in so long, um, or whether that was, you know, running into my ex and just like the barrage of anxiety that would come up, whatever it was, I had this complete knowing that I was I was so well exactly as I was and I was so stable and open and there was it was as if there was nothing in me that I needed to um, change in order to know that. And so I was unshakable. I just couldn't be I couldn't be moved. I was I was so clear on how I wanted to relate to myself. I was so clear about how I wanted to relate with others, including my ex, including his family, including my family. It was just profound to see that it was possible to be so stable, like really so stable and mature and at ease, even though I was sitting in a cafe crying. Mm. Mm. Oh, God, that sounds... It's, I mean, at, at once, like I said, heartbreaking and, and, you know, at the same time, heavenly. One of the things just listening to you that I'm, you know, that, that I can hear is like when, when you discover that kind of stability, you use the word unshakable. I mean, then th that must mean that you're basically no longer afraid of, of anything that could come up for you. Yeah, that's a hundred percent my experience is that I think before this teaching I wanted to have answers for circumstances so if this happens then do this and you know it would never work because even if I if the circumstance happened it would be slightly different to how I imagined it and the rule that I'd come up with I'd forgotten in that moment or whatever it was it was just you know a complete mess and a waste of time um, and now I have such trust in myself and a, a complete knowledge that no matter what comes my way, um, I'm I'm completely fine. I don't need to protect or defend even myself against feeling really awful things. Um, and it's I think it's the most incredible. This experience has really been the most incredible teaching for the rest of my life. And um, just knowing that no matter what comes up. I, there's, I just, I don't worry. I really don't worry about any of that because I've seen that it's possible to stare down the face of what felt like utter destitution and be completely unflinching and completely loving and completely stable and completely mature and still show up for my life, show up for work, you know, um, look after myself really practically. That's just conventionally speaking that's just wild that that's possible and not only is it possible but it's better than that because it's um you know it's so real mm -hmm. well that's every word that you're saying is exactly that it's so real so um tell us how you mentioned before you you were very clear on how you wanted to show up to yourself and to others um, and now we're hearing a lot on how you were showing up like for yourself, your own attitude towards your thoughts, towards your mm -hmm. circumstance. How how did that then play out or relate, support you in relating with your family, with his family, with your friends? I assume that you had a shared friendship circle after so many years of living together. Um, and if any, what kind of response did that get you from them the way that you showed up? So I think the the main thing that, that happened with everyone around me was that I was so clear that I was not going to go into any stories, um, indulge, like um, blaming him or criticising him. And Obviously, those thoughts arose in me, but I was just so clear that I had complete love for him and that I didn't want to disrespect him or anybody else uh, or myself by going into the stories and making making the whole situation wrong. And um, so, I mean, that just alone, the fact that nobody was, you know, I just didn't give permission for anyone to say mean things um, was um. pretty groundbreaking like that's really unconventional that I didn't go into stories of 
oh, can you believe he did this or this was how he behaved or whatever. I just, that was totally not part of the equation. And that's um, usually, sorry for interrupting you here, but, yeah. but that's, I mean, in my own experience, it feels like people always feel that they need to take sides in that kind of a situation. Like it's either your fault or it's his fault or it's, it has to be someone's fault, right? And so you you didn't allow that in, in, in either direction for anybody to like have that that way out of the situation by making anybody wrong. That's That's amazing. Uh, exactly. And I think, you know, even just that alone is pretty amazing. And it's and it's made the relationships with all of those people so beautiful because it's not about making anybody wrong or going into the story. And it frees up so much space to just be really loving and available. Um, and, you know, I, I think that from that decision, really everything else flowed with the way that I interacted with everybody else because I didn't need for people to behave in a certain way towards me in order for me to be with them. You know, it wasn't like if you speak in this way, then we can talk, but if you don't, then, you know, you're out or if someone said the wrong, I mean, people said the wrong thing all the time, of course. Like I say the wrong thing to myself, so how could I expect that, you know, everybody else would just always say the perfect thing to like make me feel good so of course you know everything came up so much anger at my at, you know my family and friends for saying the wrong thing or whatever but I I just had this very clear um knowing that I wanted to behave in a way that would be of most benefit and so that meant being loving and respectful regardless of the fact that sometimes people said things that just really hurt or in that moment seemed to really make it worse. And I think in, in doing that, every single relationship in my life has become stronger, every single one. My relationship with my family is profound and so full of love and gratitude. It, it already was, but even more so. And the same with my friends. It's just this incredible openness and love and, you know, just, I, I, yeah, it's just been the most profound gift really, which is feels a bit bizarre to say that because it really was also the most painful, but it has been the most beautiful experience of my life. Yeah, <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is indeed quite something to say, especially after yeah. I was, you know, how you started this this conversation here, how heartbreaking <laughs> it was. And <laughs> to have that conclusion is quite something. Um, yeah, in fact, I don't know what else to ask. I mean, what what uh, you know, what what more would there be to say? After it's such a complete, like three hundred sixty degree turnaround of something that could have been, like you said. I mean, I know that that my life could have gone in all kinds of direction after a really severe breakup. I like I for sure I was quite young at the time and I for sure drank too much. I did things that you definitely shouldn't be doing. And <laughs> because I didn't know how, how to help myself, how to support myself. And, you know, from everything that you shared to not only come out of this alive, so to speak, but to, to have seen changes that really benefit not just yourself, but that enrich your relationship in this way is, it's just completely incredible. Um, so this is like, was that a year ago or something like that, one and a half years ago? Yeah, exactly, about one and a half years ago. And I think the lessons continue to, I continue to reap benefits from this whole experience, including that I feel like I can understand other people so much more now mm -hmm. and I am um, so much more available to show up for other people who are experiencing grief, whether that's, from a breakup or just from any aspect of life because I feel I understand disappointment and rejection, you know, even if a friend is having a casual encounter with someone and, you know, they don't text back, I feel like I understand what comes up in that so much more because I've allowed it in myself. And, you know, yeah, as I said, I just think it's it's almost this, this um, experience that just continues to show me how powerful it is to really allow these experiences to be as they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I know Candace, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Candace is the founder of Balanced View and, and, and she often quotes with like this massive smile on her face, you know, that the, the bigger the affliction, the, the, the bigger the challenge, the greater the wisdom. And your story is just such a good example for this, not some, you know, something we would wish upon ourselves or other people, but uh, just still such a perfect example of how being in a situation like this and then reaping these these benefits like you said for grief to see that it it can't really like hurt us it 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 can't really do anything to us and in allowing open intelligence the just the the, the openness of your heart as you expressed it before to shine through there is just everything we need in that situation is right there it's so yeah, so precious and and beautiful. Um, anything else that that you would like to share around this situation? Um, any any advice you have for anybody who is maybe in a situation where they experience any kind of grief or any kind of like heartbreak over either a loved one leaving or maybe the death of someone who they feel very close to. Um, I think for me, I've seen that it's possible to just experience everything as love and with love um, and that that's been possible by rel relying on this teaching and, and you know, really getting real with the nature of all of these experiences. Because like you said, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. I wouldn't wish, I wouldn't have wished the experience on my worst enemy. I really wouldn't have. Um, but to know in myself, in my own direct experience, that it's possible to feel complete love and stability and ease and openness amidst such turmoil and such pain I just I know that that that's the case for every single experience and yeah I guess that that's that would be my my heart wish really beautiful wow I in fact have some goosebumps here <laughs> Sam this was completely amazing there have been so many comments here thanking you for your wisdom for your love and for sharing everything that's been possible for you in such a way that we all can feel this is possible for us as well so thank you so much for sharing so openly and with great tenderness and courage and and sincerity it's been really really beautiful to have you here and thank you for so everybody for everybody who's watching here if if this sounds in any way like it can relate to you in whatever way that you are facing situations where you feel you can't really access what Sam was sharing about today and you'd like to have a conversation with us. We would love to get on the phone with you to consider where you're at right now, what those challenges are exactly in your life and what steps you could take so that your experience can be I don't want to say exactly as Sam's because this is really an incredible example of how it can be for somebody. Uh, we we can't <laughs> say this will be exactly the amazing result you're after. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so jump on a call with us. We'll post the link for having this free breakthrough call with us in the comment section here. We always love meeting people, hearing about your life so that we can really look at together, you know, what are the next steps that you could take in your life so that there isn't any needless suffering, really, because life brings up so many things for all of us, whether it's a breakup or illness or physical pain or other things that can come up in life and it's just amazing to have to have the tools in place to face everything avoid nothing and to have access to that love that you said is at the basis of everything so we hope to see you speak with you and in the meantime enjoy uh, a wonderful rest of your day thank you again so much sam this was utterly amazing 
Thank you so much for having me. Beautiful. Bye, friends. Take care, everybody.